take advantage of that. But um, other than that, we have the uh, parent trigger bill, um, which we're not going to go into detail, but it's more or less to do with schools. Um, but that really didn't make it back up to us, so that's something we didn't worry about. One thing was the, uh, some of the gun bills that was trying to make their way, you know, they made it through the House and they were passed and then they went over to the Senate and they really couldn't get everything worked out, so that didn't come back to us. But I'm gonna tell you this, it's not over, okay? Just this session is over, but somehow that bill is gonna work its way back in with some changes here and there, but you guys, your voice is the one I've heard from Valdosta area and county, they said we don't want it. So me as a representative, I got to push that, that we don't want it. And I must reiterate any time, like I said at the town hall meeting, any time that we're representing people we, and, be, and we're their voice, we have to listen to them and understand what they're saying because we're supposed to be their voice out here. And I would like to just encourage every last one of you to get involved in the process on how bills become laws and, you know, come visit me or we, we're out of session now, but that doesn't mean everything has to stop because the legal offices and me working on bills, I can still do that, you know, through the summer and through the rest of the year. So I want you guys to stay involved like you're doing. Any ideas that, you know, that you can bring to me that we can help out in the county, in the city, whatever we need to do, let's get together and work on that. And I appreciate this opportunity being here tonight. And uh, if you need anything, just let me know. I appreciate the Democratic Party, local Democratic Party for everything. And I look forward to us going up there, doing an even better job. And um, I'm looking forward to Marcus to, you know, you, you, I'm going to tell you you're in the right place right now. You're sitting next to the right person. Okay, I'm going to tell you that now. Because you want to have a legacy of being a servant in this community. And that's what Ms. Joyce has. Even though I'm a state representative, exactly. Even though I'm a state representative on the state level, that wisdom, you got to make them calls and get her opinion. And I think when I make those calls, I say, Ms. Joyce, now this is what's going on. What you thinking? What you, how you think we need the role? You know what I mean? So that means a lot. So it takes all of us working together. Once again, thank you very much. And uh, y'all keep me in your prayers. Okay, from, from what I've seen, right, it'll make a big difference, and from what I'm seeing and the information that I have, when we look at this whole Medicaid expansion thing, it's not just a total give to us as a state. There's monies that we're going to have to allocate and budget to go along with this project, and I think that's what the governor's looking at, that we're already, you know, on a serious budget trying to get things done, even though it's going to help a lot of people. But what are we going to have to put into the situation? I'm thinking the government may say, the governor's looking at it, okay, we got 150 that we're still going to cover, 150,000 that we're going to cover. If you take over the next three years and we can add through the budget and through different programs, if we can add another 150,000 people for the next three, four years, those 600,000 that we can cover all at once, it'll actually do it over a period of time. Or the governor's thinking, okay, well, if I can go ahead and not sign it right now, and we do whatever we can, and then maybe we can opt in at some point later. You know, but you never know what he's thinking. But all I know is there's still 450,000 people that still need to be covered as soon as possible. So that's where I still stand on it, that I would like for him to sign, and there's several of us would like for him to, and we can just go by and continue to sign resolutions and encourage to say, look, we need this done. But it's the people that's going to have to do it. 
They're going to have to get on the lines. They're going to have to call. They're going to have to get in the media. The people are going to have to speak up. And it's sad a lot of people that need it and that are eligible for it, if he sign it, they're nowhere right now beating down the doors and say we want it. There, I've, I haven't heard really from a lot of my constituents that may be eligible for it. They haven't come and say, look, we definitely want that. Well, I, I, well, I have no idea right now at this moment because once we're in session and we're working hard on the budget and all the other issues, my main focus <laughs> is mainly Georgia, the state of Georgia and our county. So I have a time to even look into what's, you know, making them change their mind. I think he should be able to sign at any time because the governor's active, you know, all the time. So people just rang up his number every day. More and more people rang up his number every day. Would that be helpful? Yeah, you can because you're making your voice heard. Just think of everybody in the state of Georgia or the majority of everybody in the state, especially the 600,000 that can be covered. I think if they went up to the Capitol and stayed there a few days and make some phone calls and call their legislators, you get, you know, you get more, you know, I think you get farther where you want to get. So it takes people. I'm going to tell you that. There's bills where, you know, I was looking at certain bills and some of them didn't even come up. Okay. They never came up to the house because some of them made the committee. But here's the power of people. There was a Senate resolution that was just in the works of talking. Before I knew it, I had about 150 emails sent to me from my constituents area. And you know what? You know what I said on that one? Because everybody said no and gave me a little information with it. It was Senate Resolution 371. And everybody said no, 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 no. So evidently, everybody else sent the same email to their state legislators and it was so, you know, powerful that it didn't even make it through. So we didn't even see it. And that's how you get to your legislators. Emails, telephone calls, letters, do it. Uh, the visit, ooh, the visit even better, isn't it? So those visits good. You know, I know it's, and it's sad that even some of the people in Atlanta that can just drive over to the Capitol don't really even do it a lot. But it's people in rural Georgia that will get in there, I want a meeting with you, and we meet with you. You know, so it's just exciting, but it's going to take people to make these things happen. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? I think the way they was looking at that, it's, it's set the way it is right now. It's set and it's going to be up to us going in and doing the summer and on the off season to try to get it back in. And it's always possible. So if we get in there, if you want to change it or if you like it the way it is or you want to make some amendments and some substitutes, we can always pull a bill and do new bills and then that other bill can supersede one. But it just depends on a lot of times when the governor has put a bill together and, he, and his floor leaders bring it up and you got a majority Republican, it's going to be sticking until eight to ten years when we get control again. <laughs> but, you know, hope we can get control quicker than that. You know, the Democrat will be the majority again. But we're pushing hard up at the Democratic caucus to try to find other people, get those, you know, numbers right again. And get it back purple and do everything we need to do. Right, and I think out of the, the bill that came to the House that the governor brought, um, I think I was, it was only four people. Let me see, it was two bills that had to do a lot with that. I know that out of 180 people, four of us voted against it, and I was one of them. You know what I mean? So... I'm not going to always vote with the whole crew, especially when I feel something and I know I got concerns about it. Because what happened a lot of times, if you vote 
and you're probably in the less than like four or five people, somebody's going to come and see you. What, what, why did you vote against it? And I tell them, well, I didn't like that this particular price right here. Is this what you'll be paying this on or that on? Or, you know, whatever the situation is. You know, so, and you make it known, and they say, well, you know, that is a good thought. I didn't think about that. Mm hmm. Right. So we got to work on that. And, you know, so just because some bills make it through is not the end. Because we can always come up and put some new ones in, revise them, and do what we need to do. And honestly, I'll tell you what happens a lot of times. That one year where you have somebody in the majority and then it's getting to the point where they know the majority is going to be over and you're getting ready to have a new majority, they will take that next session and reverse a lot of bills that you had in place. So it is interesting up there. Or, and I'm, I'm going to close with this, okay? I can come up with a law as a Democrat and say, this is what size paper we're going to start using so we can save more money in the state of Georgia, right? This is a Dexter Sharper Bill 101. All right? You hear that? This is what we're going to do. We get the Republican side that gives a whiff, find out about my bill, and they say, we're going to come up with this bill, the Gretchen Quarterman Bill 102. We're going to start using this in the state of Georgia to make us you know, save more money. And she's a Republican side, I'm a Democratic side, I'm a Republican majority. Who do you think Bill is going to pass? This one. But if Gretchen likes me, let's say, Dex, you're a hardworking guy. We, we appreciate you. You're a hard worker. I tell you what, I got a Bill 102, and we're going to start using this paper. Do you want to be on my bill? What I have to do? Yeah, Gretchen, I'm on your bill with you. Gretchen took my bill and allowed me to be on it. And so all the support I got for my bill, I have to tell my people what? We got to support Gretchen bill, so all the Democrats and the Republicans passed Gretchen bill 180 to zero. That's the way it works. Can you, can you understand how that feels sometimes? But you don't give up because that time when you vote or when you get enough of your people working hard in these committees and your, you people calling and all that, it's, it makes a difference. So we're, we're happy with what we were able to get up in the state on the Democratic side and because we got a lot of bills that we was working hard on and they made it through. So it was a good, it was a good session for the Democrats. Thank you all so much. Dexter knows I'd never steal his paper. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dexter, for spending some time with us. I know that people have been very interested. You can come right up here to the... No, you do because we can't hear you back there. I couldn't hear a single word you said, Joyce. Thank you. I want to say this to Dexter while he's here because I have been up to visit Dexter on a couple of occasions and talked to him by several bills. But Dexter, I really want to applaud you for your first few months and the learning curve that you had, go, go, had to go through with and the work that you have done thus far. Thank you. Yeah, I'm positive that wasn't an easy job. Uh, this is the time of our meeting where we have members wishing to be heard. Does anybody have anything? Oh, well, we did forgot uh, officers' reports. We totally. F Dr. Barks. Hey, thank you, Gretchen. Um, I'm Dennis Marks, uh, Vice Chair for Elections. Uh, last time I talked about qualifying for uh, public public office, and uh, you still need to be keeping that in mind. Uh, encouraging people that you think would be good elected officials. Uh, qualifying uh, is indeed the end of, end of August, not, not in September. Uh, but there are 
school board positions, there are uh, county commission, uh, ca um, city council positions uh, that are that are open in the municipalities, both Valdosta and the smaller municipalities in the in the county. Uh, so please please be thinking of that and encouraging uh, yourself or others to to run. But there's a step that you can also take that's that's not as hard as running for public office, and that's serving on boards and commissions. Uh, the city of Valdosta and Lowndes County uh, both have. Uh, uh, appointees that the county commission makes, that the city council makes. Uh, you can go on the city website. There is a list of uh, vacancies on uh, boards and commissions. Uh, Jim Galloway earlier mentioned the one on the airport authority. Uh, there are three on the public art advisory committee. There's one on Keep Lounge Valdosta Beautiful. Uh, there's one on the Greater Lowndes Planning Commission. Uh, there's one on the Valdosta Housing Authority, uh, an appointment of a resident of the public housing. Uh, there's one on the Valdosta Housing Board of Adjustment and Appeals. Uh, excuse me, there were two on that position. Uh, there are, there's one on the Valdosta Lounge uh, County Zoning Board of Appeals, another one on the County Parks and Recreation Authority, uh, another one on the Community Development Block Grant Advisory Committee, and one on the Valdosta Lowndes County Construction uh, Board of Adjustments and Appeals. If you have an interest in any one of these areas, in, in, the, in the arts, uh, in, in zoning, uh, in parks and recreation, uh, this is a good way that you can get involved. I just read off the positions from the city, uh, but on the ones that it's Valdosta and, and Lowndes both, there is also a, a, a county appointee uh, to that committee uh, or commission. So whether you live in the city or you live in the county, this is a great way to become involved. So please go to the city website and, and look at those openings. The ones I announced, uh, the closing date for these is May the, May the 1st, so you've got some time to uh, get an application together and, and uh, fill out the ethics form. Uh, so this is a good way for you and others to become involved uh, in local, local governance. Uh, so please take these opportunities. We've worked hard uh, to make sure in the city uh, that these are uh, announced uh, when there are vacancies. Uh, we're encouraging the folks in the, in the county to make a, a similar set of public announcements, and, and I, I know that Joyce and DeMarcus will work hard on, on this. Uh, so uh, please take advantage of these opportunities to be a public servant. You don't have to run for office. You can serve on one of these boards or commissions. Thank you. I serve on the Zoning Board of Appeals. It's a totally great thing. And Joyce has um, made the, the change on the commission that when people are being reappointed or appointed to that, that they have to actually come and, and see the commissioners. They can't just be some random person in the back room. Um, so uh, she's making changes in terms of transparency there, which are positive. Um, I would call for our membership uh, chair or our qualifying chair, but neither of them are here. But I, too, highly um, recommend um, if you think about running for office, it's a totally fun thing to do. Totally fun. Um, if you're not up for running for office, you know, you don't live in a school board district that's available right now, do, do apply for one of those boards and commissions. It, it's a simple way to serve. They usually meet just once a month. Um, not too much homework, and it's a good way to get involved. Now we'll come to members wishing to be heard. Do we have any members that wish to be heard? George. First of all, I want to thank all the elected officials for being here, especially Dexter Sharper. He was at the homeless uh, uh, banquet we had, and it was outstanding. And by the way, I should have that on YouTube this week on Boston GBR on YouTube channel. I also want to say I have 153 views on my channel. And uh, the reason I got up is because I want you to know that in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where that dentist possibly infected or, or possibly there are 7,000 people being called to see if uh, some people may have been infected with hepatitis or the HIV virus. And uh, I, I just wonder, I, I, I question if any nurse or anybody that had called the newspaper or tried to get somebody to look into that before it actually made the news. In other words, 
What if we all sit back and know something is going on that could affect all of us, but we don't say nothing about it? So we got to, I think that was a prime example why the news and what happens at public meetings is so important. Uh, just think about it. Uh, what if somebody had went to the newspaper and say, this is happening, but nobody reported it? It put us in danger, and I think this is why it's important for us to take a stand. Uh, I got up because I wanted you all to know that April the 8th, next Monday, the Quitman 10 plus 2, which are, are Democrats, are finally going to court after nearly three years over in Brooks County. It'll be 9 o'clock, April the 8th, and I got perhaps more information on YouTube than anybody. It's because I am concerned about voting rights here in the state of Georgia. Also, we have had three meetings, public meetings, where very important information came up, but it was not public, it, it was not published in our local newspaper, nor on television, nor on radio. So that means the local citizenry know nothing about what took place. And I have been on the Valdosta Daily Times about that information. And so if you read Sunday's paper, after over four weeks, they finally put Reverend Rose's uh, letter to the editor, which was brought up at these public meetings, but you all knew nothing about it because it was like a tree fell in the forest, and then they tell us there is no forest. So we got to put pressure on the newspaper, we know they got, it's a private, they can publish what they want, but we got to let them know that we want to know what's going on in our community, so don't control it and suppress it. Now, my YouTube channel, in the last month I got a call from the Justice Department. They were looking at my YouTube, one in particular was dealing with the death at the Lyons County uh, High School with Kendrick Johnson. And Ms. Buchanan from the Justice Department asked me what I call a meeting. So we had a meeting, and they came here. So I'm